Angela, and I'm here at the studio of set decorator Lydia Marks. She's decorated some of the homes of the most famous characters, such as Miranda Priestly from The Devil Wears Prada and the Girls of Sex and the City. Tell us about the role of a set decorator. What are you there to do? I speak to the director and the production designer about what their hopes are for the overall look of the set. And then I source all of the furniture, fabrics, wallpapers, lighting, carpets, <laughs> anything you can think of that would be on a set to decorate it. I go and find it. How do you find those perfect personal objects for different characters? I go often to vintage and used clothing stores, furniture stores, and try to, you know, put yourself in that character's uh, shoes a little bit and feel, you know, what they might pick up at a shop. So would you say that you had to study the character as much as the actor? Yeah, and I often study it longer because I often will start prepping a film before the actors cast. Oh, wow. So I start like on a film like Sex and the City six months ahead oh, of wow. shooting. So there's a lot of time to get into those characters. So when you decorated the apartments of the characters in Sex and the City, what is your approach? I did only the films. I didn't do the TV show. So my approach was to look at all the work that people had done in the past about who these characters were and, and try to re-envision them for a big screen. We wanted to have it feel like a film and not like a blown up version of the TV show. It was challenging to remain true to those characters and get the public's acceptance into creating new sets for them. And most of the time, like you would think like, oh, um, they're not, they may not notice, but then actually they end up noticing every little detail. <laughs> there was a lot of discussion in the press and <laughs> on blogs. Like, Give me a break. <laughs> no, it's exciting to, you know, have people so interested in your work. And it's exciting to see when people love it and also when people, you know, have criticism of it, why. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fascinating. What about Miranda Priestly and the the Devil Wears Prada, what was your approach there? You know, while they surround themselves with beauty, they do work at a magazine. So it couldn't be completely extravagant. It had to relate back to what was real, and it is a magazine office. We wanted the set to have a lot of richness and, and be eclectic, but also create a neutral enough palette that when the clothes come in and the jewelry and the accessories on the trays, that they still pop out. What was your room decorated like as a teen? Hmm. <laughs> um, I had a futon bed, which I thought was very cool at the time. It is cool. I still think it's cool now. <laughs> um, photos I loved and then photos of bands and movies that I loved. I love film. So how did you first break into the film business? I worked at museums for f several years after I graduated school. And I had a friend who was an art director on music videos. So I called my friend and I said, can you get me on the set? I want to see what kind of positions there are in the art department. And then once I got on the set, I quickly saw um, the role that I thought I could fulfill. What advice do you have for teens who are interested in what you do? It's really important to study not just interior design, but art and art history. A broader foundation than just interior design because I think that that can be a little flat if it's on its own. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So why do you love what you do? I love what I do because my work is always different and I get to put myself into a character's um, head and make something creative happen and bring a world to life that didn't exist. <laughs>